Hola, my name is Matt Bishop. I am the principal architect with Elastic Path Software. I want to speak to you today about delivering innovative commerce with an hypermedia API. Elastic Path is an enterprise grade commerce platform product. The kinds of customers that use our product are large customers with worldwide reaches. It is based on open source software and it is completely headless. We deliver personalized commerce experiences across many touch points. We're trusted by leading brands in many industries, including retail and travel, financial services or consumer products and others. They like us because we help them innovate. The thing about these kind of customers is they got to be powerful and successful because they have a secret sauce. They have a capability or a set of capabilities that is unique in their marketplace and they have used that secret sauce to become the successes that they are today. They look to Elastic Path to project that secret sauce into their marketplace through the touch points that they want to engage their customers with. In 2011, Elastic Path was a very different company than it is today. Our product was a storefront, a web application our customers used to deliver their products and services to web browsers. It was very successful, but our customers wanted more. They wanted to reach customers in different ways. The browser was great. They also wanted to reach them in mobile. They wanted to reach them in the store. They wanted to reach them in the Internet of Things, which at that time was a new and interesting idea. They wanted to engage their customers in more ways and in more environments than they could with a web-based storefront. The key success factor that we learned from them was consistency. They wanted their secret sauce, their projection of their capability to be consistent across these touch points so that when a customer responded to an ad, say, or engaged a coupon on their mobile device or added some to their cart in the browser, when they accessed that same customer, they accessed that touch point or that service in another touch point, they wanted it to appear as well. They wanted to provide a seamless experience across the touch point with their business. At that time, this was a really hard problem to solve. We decided to look into this and figure out a way to do it. And the only way we came up with was we needed to produce an API. Elastic Path had to go from a storefront application to a headless platform. Now, how are we going to do this? We analyzed lots of ways of doing it and realized we had to first figure out what our problem was that we were trying to solve. And we realized the key problem we have to solve is complexity. Commerce is a complex endeavor. There are three main axes or aspects to this complexity I want to share with you. The first is state. There is lots of data and state in commerce. You have many interacting domains. You have items. You have prices. You have the customer's cart. You have their preferences for currency and shipping. You have taxes and many, many more. Each one of these impacts the other. Each one of these has orchestrations with other pieces of the domain that have to work together to provide this commerce experience. The other aspect of state that's important is that it's also personalized. Because the more we can personalize your experience, the more likely you are to engage with us. Simple things like the locale that you're in will dictate the kind of taxes you're going to pay or the kind of language you'd like to be communicated with, the kind of currency you would like to have. The locality can also influence the presentation. For instance, in some parts of the world, tax for products is part of the price. Other parts of the world, it is external to the price. All of these complexities of state and the personalization thereof is a key, is a difficult part of commerce that we had to model. Another type of complexity in commerce is customizations. The secret sauce these businesses need to project are unique and they're also quite different from each other. The experience of renting a car is very different from the experience of buying cosmetics or the experience of enjoying a travel vacation where you're interacting with the business throughout the vacation. These are all different experiences requiring different kinds of state at different times 
to be presented and managed and communicated to the customer, as well as uh, blended together to create a seamless experience in the touch point that they're interacting with. The third aspect of commerce complexity is integrations. Commerce sits between integrations above and touch points, the touch points being the CMS, the web browser, Internet of Things applications, mobile applications, as well as systems of records below. ERP systems, inventory systems, tax systems, billing engines, rule engines, you name it. The interesting thing about the integrations below is this is the source of much of the secret sauce that the business is trying to project through the API to the touch points above. Taking these three levels of complexity together, we realized we couldn't make it more complex. We had to go radically simpler. So we set two goals for our API. It had to be simple to use and simple to extend. Elastic Path tried several API styles. We did four proof of concept efforts with some of these styles to figure out if they were going to work for us. We tried SOAP, very familiar with SOAP, I'm sure. We tried RDF, which is from the semantic web. We tried templated REST, so a level two style of REST that was based on templates. And all these efforts did not lead us to our goal of simplification. We ended up looking at level three REST. At the time, it was known by the name, the moniker, Hattius, or Hypermedia as the engine of application state. It's been shortened to Hypermedia more recently. And we chose Hypermedia because we believed that API style will give us this simplicity of use and simplicity of extension that we needed to solve our complexity problems in our market. You may be asking, what is Hypermedia? Hypermedia is composed of two concepts, resources and relationships. Resources are things. They're the nouns of the system carts, items, profiles, purchases. These are things that are known to you as nouns in the world. They have relationships to each other that are named. Some examples of relationships between two people, for instance, could be a son has a relationship to another person called mother. The reverse mother relationship is called to son. Relationships do not have the same name, they have their own names depending on the direction that you go. Another example is an item has a relationship to a price. An item can also have another relationship to a cart or to a purchase if that item is found in either of those things. To use a Hypermedia API, you start at the beginning or you start at the root, the slash. When you get the slash with a browser or with your client, you will get the list of links that are available to you to start navigating. So you will see things like the default cart, searching, navigations. These are resources that are going to give you access to the system and allow you to discover what it is that this API can provide you. When you access these links by following them, they will lead you to other links. So, or they may lead you to controls. An example of a control would be the add to cart form. Off of an item, there will be a link to this form. And the form will give you fields that you fill in, just like a form in a browser or from a government or something like that. You fill it in, and then in that resource, you will be an address you can post this form to, to create a new entity from that. Some entities can be modified by putting them. So you take the, form, take the, the entity, change, say, an address, change one of the lines, and put it back to the address you got it from. You can also delete the entity. If you don't want this address anymore, you can simply issue a delete on it and it will be removed from the system. Understanding the two concepts, resources and their relationships, and understanding how to access the API is like browsing and using a website, gives you all the tools you need in order to utilize a Hypermedia API successfully. In 2011, when we decided to use Hypermedia as our API style, we started building Cortex, our commerce API product. 
Along the way, we discovered many advantages that I would like to share with you today. The first advantage is discoverability. Like a website, you can follow links to discover related content and related links. What we found is developers really liked this experience. They didn't have to read documentation. They didn't have to study a book. They didn't have to ask a lot of questions. They could start at the, at the root, browse through the API, and figure out from the common language, common terms that we use to describe the resources and the relationships, what these things were and how they interact with each other. The discoverability made it really easy for developers to use and understand how to use our API. Another advantage of a Hypermedia API is contextuality. We discovered that we could present contextual resources and relationships. Now when I mean contextual, I mean based on the person who is actually interacting through the touch point with the API itself. This contextuality gave us a way to present back content that was tuned just for that customer. We knew what their locality was. We knew what their preferences were. We could personalize the content based on what kind of device they were using to access this. This contextualization gave us the ability to shape the API for that customer based on their profile, based on whatever the marketer wanted to do, based on their role. We could remove links if they needed to be removed. We could add links if they were related only to that uh, type of customer. This contextuality gave us a lot of power over the presentation we were giving to the clients that were consuming the API without the clients having to understand the contextuality at all. Another advantage was that the clients that consume the API could be truly reactive. You may have heard this concept or have learned about reactive clients in your other work. Reactive clients, by their name, react to what they're presented with. They are familiar with the domain. They know what a card is. They know what a price is. They know what a form is. But they don't contain business logic to determine when an item can be put in a cart. The decisions are made by the server and provided as links in the API so that if an item cannot be added to the cart, instead of coding up a client that knows how to call, say, the availability service or the inventory service or both services to determine if they should allow the cart to be, the item to be carted, instead the API presents the link to add to cart or chooses not to present the link. And that decision is made in one place. The client simply reacts based on the presence of those links it can also respond to messages that are in the API that can explain why something cannot be added to the cart. So the client's reactivity makes them much smaller and much simpler. If I'm going to present out a, this experience across multiple touch points, my clients need to be reactive. They need to be simple. Enough understanding to present the API as is, as is you know, vended to them, but not so smart as to make decisions. Because the problem with those decisions is they have to be copied to each client if that's the model you're following. The simpler model, the reactive model, enabled us to reach all the touch points our customers wanted to reach simply and quickly through this simple model of reactive clients. The advantages I've talked about so far relate to our goal of simple to use. The API is simple to use. The other goal, the API is simple to extend, became an advantage in Hypermedia. The way extension works in a Hypermedia API is that if you want to bring in a new resource, a new concept, you create that new resource and you link it to existing resource. You create a relationship between an existing thing to the new thing. An example of this that we see over and over again is links from the item that you're offering for sale to Another mechanism to discover related items. An example could be recommendations. Another one could be a selector or a configuration to pick different models of what you're looking at. Or even selecting related content based on the context of who you are. 
For instance, telecommunications and cell companies don't want to sell you what you already subscribe to. They want to sell you subscriptions to things that are related to what you already have. That's important so that people don't end up with a negative experience subscribing to a product they already own or subscribing to a product that they cannot actually use. By using this extension model of links, they can provide their customizations into the API simply by adding links and presenting them for the client to browse through to. Similarly, you can remove capabilities by removing the links. In some systems, price is not an aspect of this system that they want to vend. If it's a subscription product, they don't want to see price as part of the experience. So in those systems, they remove the price resource from the system or they hide the links at the API level and the client never sees prices, it never reacts to render them and the feature disappears without, showing, without having to modify the item itself. In both of these cases, the item stays the same as it came out of the box. The new capabilities are added in and linked at runtime to that resource. This extensibility model is simple for people to understand and in practice is simple to build. Extensibility through hypermedia breaches our simple to extend goal with the API. The last advantage I want to share with you is somewhat theoretical but I believe it's holding up in our practice. We have built hundreds of endpoints in our API across 30 resource families. We have lots of resources with lots of relationships. The advantage I believe exists in a hypermedia API is long-term stability. When we set out to build this API, we needed to find some model to follow in order to succeed at it long-term. And one that we follow extensively is database normalization heuristics. If you've ever developed a relational database or studied it in school, you'll know what normalization means. And normalization's goal is stability. You define the data model in a way that won't need to change over time. It's done in a way that's extensible by adding new tables and new relationships in the database. We could basically take the same approach to our resource design and come up and we built out stable resources that have stable relationships. In this API, we have added many resources. We've added many relationships. We've never had to change a relationship in the four years that this product has been available to customers. We have moved some things around, but the relationships have stayed the same. The shapes of the entities have pretty much stayed the same too. So while I can't prove to you with 100 years of experience that this model is stable, I'm fairly confident by following the normalization rules, you will have a stable API because it looks and feels the same as relational databases. That advantage we can inherit from this other domain and trust that it's going to keep our API stable. Stability is important because of the touch points. When you have dozens of touch points, and many versions of the application. Some of it may live in hardware that cannot be updated. Some of it may live in mobile devices that the client doesn't want to update or the vendor doesn't, can't provide updates for. You need a way for the API to be resilient given the number of clients and their abilities to access it over time. We believe Hypermedia gives us the right level of stability with the other aspects of simplicity to use and simplicity to extend. In 2011, we set out to build a Hypermedia API that was simple to use and simple to extend. Today, we believe we have solved commerce complexity with our Hypermedia API.